Today we have a very special guest, Bruce Burnworth at B Burnworth on Twitter. Bruce, thanks so much for coming on the show. Glad to be here. So tell us a little bit more about, about yourself and how you became a huge Tesla investor and what, from your Twitter bio, I understand you're a civil engineer by trade. So how did you kind of discover Tesla and tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. So the story kind of started about seven years ago when I was looking for ways to increase the money that I'd have for retirement. And up at that, to that point, I'd never invested in stocks. I thought stocks would be too slow. I needed something that was going to be faster. So I did a lot of research into stock options. Uh, to make that part of the story, story kind of short, I ended up taking about $100,000 in money to over $800,000 and then back to zero. Oh. Um, so, so while I was very successful in, in increasing it way up, I also was good at taking it all the way down to zero, which is what can happen with with stock options. So you have to be very, very careful. So I took a break then after that for a few years and uh, just kind of hunkered down and, and worked. And then in 2017, I started doing some research about electric vehicles. And that part of the research, I concluded that the ICE vehicles or internal combustion engine vehicles were going to essentially be hard to buy by 2027. So that's 10 years from 2017. Everybody at that point in time pretty much thought I was crazy, that how, we're going to have ICE vehicles being sold for a long time. And I said, no, no I, I think uh, EVs are going to be more economical. Or they're going to uh, move forward faster than anybody expects. So uh, I, I invested a little bit actually in Ford at that time, thinking that they, would, they were talking about um, doing EVs. But that didn't happen, so I sold out on that investment. In 2018, I bought a Model 3 for my own use. And then in June of 2019, after Tesla had gone through Production Hill, I started investing in Tesla. I could see at that point in time that they had gone over the hump. They were going to be full-fledged into producing EVs for a long time. It was going to be a really good investment. So I started investing in Tesla call options. Uh, by December of 2019, I had about $300,000 invested in 20 different call options. And my strategy that I had figured out from the money that I'd lost before was to uh, spread out, not, not over companies, but spread out over Tesla uh, into different options. And I invested ni about 90% of my money into long-term options and then about 10% into short-term options. And the 90% in long-term options were pretty close to in the money or right up the money. Uh, and then the short-term options, the 10% were out of the money and sometimes significantly out of the money, like you know, 100% above what the stock was selling for at that point in time. That's right. You had so the, uh, you had the a thousand uh, strike prices, right? I think I saw that on your Twitter feed. Uh, yeah. So actually, um, the biggest the biggest increase that I had was in December. I bought stock options that expired in what was that now? Um, I think it was March initially, and then I extended it to August. I uh, by by trading out of those options and, and right away trading into options that were for August. And those options were way out of the money. I think uh, it was quite, at least twice uh, the selling price of the stock at that time. I had 3,100, um, well, 30, 31 contracts, which is, represents 3,100 shares. And that, investment returned me 11,000% in wow. eight months. <laughs> That's crazy. So essentially I took $23,000, which is the amount that I invested in that, and turned it into $1.8 million wow. in eight months. And just that, just one portion of the $300,000 I invested. So that was, that was pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. um, and then the pandemic hit and I thought, 
I need to somehow get some more money to invest in a Tesla because this is ridiculous. Tesla's gone down a lot and there's no reason for it. You know, like there's a reason for the whole market to go down, but not for Tesla to go down. Right. And it's just going to bounce right back. And so, so I ended up, I said, well, the only thing I have left is my house. So, hmm, okay, I'll sell my home. So I sold my home quickly at below market so I could sell it quickly and took $300,000 and invested it in a similar mix of call options. Wow, that's ballsy. So, yeah, and people again thought I was crazy. But, oh yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I say, yeah, they thought I was crazy and now I'm crazy rich, so <laughs> it's okay. That's awesome. <laughs> so basically that, that $600,000 that I invested in, I currently have 20X off of that six hundred thousand um, dollars, that's that's my return over about a year. That's and incredible. now I'm in the process of now I'm in the process of exercising those options so that I own the stock. Because if I actually sold the options, then I'd have to pay short term capital gains on them. That's right. On a lot of them, and I also moved from California to Nevada so that when I do have to pay capital gains tax, it's not. California capital gains tax, which would have been like 13.3%. That's so, smart. Uh, I, I think a lot of people yeah. are leaving California right now. That's what yeah. I hear. It was interesting. Right after I was under contract to buy the house in Incline Village in Nevada, right, with a nice view of Lake Tahoe, um, the market just exploded. And the reason it exploded was just exactly why I was buying the house is because people realized with the pandemic and you don't need to work from the office anymore. You can work from home. Well, why do I need to live in the Bay area where it's really expensive and not so nice and I can move to Lake Tahoe. Um, so the market just exploded that I heard from somebody that houses were on the market when I was buying like a hundred days. And a month later there were houses, it houses the average house on the market was on the market for three days. So it went from a hundred days to three days in about a month, month and a half. It was just crazy. Wow. That, that's crazy. I, I'm, I'm in Atlanta right now and I have a lot of friends buying houses and they, they have to make a, they were having to, they were getting outbid within hours. I mean, so a lot of these houses yeah. weren't even on the market for a day. It's, it's insane. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, but it ended up that you know, that $23,000 that I invested in the options went to $1.8 million. That is that essentially that $23,000 paid for my entire house, remodeling the house, adding on a garage. It's that $23,000 is paying for all of that. <laughs> That's awesome. And you got a beautiful view of Lake Tahoe. Yeah. Well, not so much recently because of all the smoke and right. fires in California. But yeah, normally I do have a nice view. That's and uh, yeah, so I, as I was saying, now I'm in the process of taking all of my options and exercising them into stock. And I had to sell, sell just a few of the options initially. And then what I'm doing now is I'm borrowing on margin to exercise more of the stock. And I have to do that incrementally. I, so I, sell, I, um, I use the margin that I have on the stock that I own to exercise some options to get more options, to get more stock. And then I can use margin against that stock to buy, exercise more options. And uh, my plan is to exercise all 50,000 shares that I have options to buy and own that stock uh, pretty much forever. Because I figure that what I can do is uh, when I need money, I just borrow against the stock and it's, it's like 4.25% interest. And Tesla has recently been going up 300% a year. So I don't mind paying 4.25% interest. Absolutely. So are you, you have enough margin in that account or in order to cover those 50,000 shares based on your existing balances? Am I understanding that correctly? Not exactly. What I have to do is I sold some options. So I had some cash in the account. Okay. With that cash, I was able to exercise a few options into stock. Then I had more stock stock. Then I would take that stock and borrow against that stock to exercise more options. And I'm just doing this incrementally over time in order to acquire all of the, 
in order to exercise all of the stock. Options. Got it. Got it. So yeah, as of right now, you you don't have the margin capabilities to exercise all the options. And it sounds like you're not necessarily want to anyway. But slowly, as your as your stock grows, you're you're gonna have your, hopefully your margin power will expand, and eventually you will own all fifty thousand shares, and that there will be no options. You'll just be holding that long term. Correct. Got gotcha. it. Yeah, and. and and Tesla cooperates in that because not only do I incrementally increase the number of shares, but the value of those shares goes up as well. Absolutely. And that gives me more, more margin buying power as well. Absolutely. That, that so, makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, I, I think I, as I relate to you before we had this conversation that, I need to tell people to not do what I did. <laughs> right. And the reason is it's very risky. I, I mean, essentially, I took what I had for retirement in cash, and I had other money for retirement to do like in pension type things. But I took what I had for retirement uh, in cash and then sold my house and invested it all in Tesla stock options, call options, which I would not recommend to anybody else. Um, but it worked for me. And it's, uh, it's been quite good. You're you're definitely the yeah. exception to uh, to the rule <laughs> for sure. Yeah. What I what I tell people that are thinking about investing in stock options is I said the first thing you need to know is you need to know like absolutely know that your the stock that you're investing in will go up and how much it will go up and when it will go up. Most people have a really hard time just picking a stock that will go up. But with options, you need to know how much it will go up and when it will go up that amount. And once you're comfortable and demonstrated to yourself that you can predict not only how, not only that's going to go up, but how much it's going to go up and when it's going to go up, then you're ready to invest in stock options. <laughs> and, and people say, well, that's impossible. I say, yeah, it's pretty much impossible. But I've been able to do it over the last year and and quite successfully. So works for me. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think that you're on to something with your 90% long-term options. The longer time value you have in there, the less time decay you know, with a stock that you know, like Tesla is just innovating, is going to go up over the long term. You're you're really you're you're leveraging yourself better, and you're kind of de-risking it to an extent, as opposed to a lot of people buy short-term options like ahead of Battery Day, and and I think especially because Tesla options, at least before they split, were extremely expensive, so a lot of people didn't really have the capital to buy leaps and longer-term options. So I think that you played it. As, far, as safe as one can play when, when trading options by doing 90% yeah. long-term. Yeah. And, and the other thing is that, you know, I'm, I am in this for the long-term. You know, I, when I looked at Tesla, I said long-term Tesla stock is the place to be. So while I was buying short-term instruments, you know, like the short-term uh, options, I was buying them looking at the long-term. Right. I was not buying them looking at, okay, I'm going to trade in and trade out of it and move around. I think this is the way for me to buy and to end up with more Tesla stock. Is if I can buy the options now, uh, I can leverage the money that I have and be able to then buy more stock or exercise those options to become uh, an owner of stock. And then I didn't figure out until about a, I don't know, two weeks ago now or a month ago maybe that. I could buy on or I could exercise my options by borrowing against the stock. And so that like dramatically changed my plans on what I was going to do and uh, actually made it a lot better. So you're, you're just referring to, to margin right there, basically. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. And, and the, and the problem that I had before was that I had these options that I made a lot of money on. And if I sold them, then I'd have to pay capital gains tax on them, which would leave me less money to buy the stock. Right, right. So you realize, yeah. Hey, I'll exercise, I'll hold them and I'll hold it for a year and a day and get that long-term capital gains. Yeah. So I'm exercising the options. Then I have to hold the stock for a year 
the I, I plan on holding it forever. So right, yeah, you're going to hold it for for many years. Yeah, but it allows me to leverage without having to subtract out some of the profits to pay uh, for in, for um, income tax. Basically, got it. Uh, that yes. was a huge thing that I learned. That's that's true. I think a lot of people don't don't think about that when when they're trading. They don't think about the the tax implications. So and and, yeah. and go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, normally it's not that big of a deal because you're not investing that much. You're not making that much money in the prop in the in the options. But I made a huge amount of money, and so you know, I needed to figure out some way to get out of paying the income taxes, and by exercising the options and going into stocks that allowed me to to do that so. absolutely so moving forward I, I will just clarify for the listeners out there as you can tell bruce and i are both long tesla stock and we are not financial advisors this is not financial advice this is our opinion but that being said i do want to to read one of your tweets i have in front of me bruce it says your estimate for people who are curious about tesla and how to you know how to think about the stock moving forward, that you have a $600 price target for early October on people understanding more about Tesla through Battery Day coming up, the annual shareholder meeting, as well as Q3 sales. Can you tell us a little bit about your, how you came to that conclusion? And also, are you attending Battery Day? Yeah, so I, I approach investing in stock a little bit differently than a lot of people, and there are probably some people that invest in stock kind of similar to what I do. But what I look at is what is the perception of the overall market? And to do that, I need to understand, first of all, what the underlying direction is of the company. And with Tesla, I look, I've done a lot of research into Tesla over the last year, year, couple of years. And I am convinced that in five years that Tesla will be the largest company in the world producing energy, transportation. They're going to get into home construction. I think they'll get into other areas as well. And they'll be disrupting all of these areas. Uh, so that was an underlying, basically, direction that I see for Tesla. I do not have any problem in investing in it and seeing that it's going to go way up. The timing of that rise in, in the price of the Tesla stock is a function, at least in my mind, it's a function of the perception of the market. And so what I look at is, okay, we have battery day coming up. Just because we have battery day coming up doesn't mean that the company is going to be more valuable, but people's perception of the company is going to be different. There, more people are going to start seeing what I see and other people see in Tesla and how big it's going to become. And that change in perception is going to change the value of the stock. And similarly, when the Q3 uh, order information and uh, delivery information comes out, that will, again, change people's perception of the stock. Um, and, and that will, again, and increase the value of the, of the stock, which I think will be about $600 sometime in October. That would be that would be incredible if that comes to fruition here at the stocks trading. It looks like right around 450 as of. The end of today looks like it was up about five percent or so, four and a half, yeah, four forty-two. And and I, then just sorry, to carry ahead. that a little bit further, and, and again, like you said, this is not advice. This is just my way of thinking of it, and I just share it because if I share it, then other people can do their own research, right? And they can maybe figure out the same thing, and maybe be comfortable with it. But people need to do their own research. Absolutely. So, having said that, I see that. After the Q4 sales information and the Q4 profit and everything else is going to happen between now and February, which will be huge progress in the ter in the gigafactories that they're building in Germany and in Austin and in Shanghai, I see the stock going to $1,200 a share in February of 2021. And that is huge. But you look at it, it's really not that big of an increase compared to the increases that we've had over the last year. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're right. So, you're right. I mean, we're up four, 450% on, on the year right now. So you're calling for a, a triple 
a little less than a triple from where we're at now. It's it's not crazy. It's not it's not unheard of yeah. for Tesla. If, if that uh, comes and, to fruition, and, we'll have to have you back on the podcast in next February. Give you credit. All right. And then then what? Just one further prediction that I have, which is even more crazy. Okay. Is in 2025. So after Tesla has, I I'd, I'd say probably a dozen gigafactories around the world at that point in time. And I think that at that point in time, it'll be very hard to buy an ICE vehicle. And, you know, maybe 80% of those electric vehicles that are sold will be Tesla. It's going to be huge. And I think that the Tesla stock will be at $20,000 a share in 2025. That's right. I, so, I I think I saw where you tweeted that. So so you're 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 that's up there with the Kathy Woods Ark Invest bull case. I think it was at twenty twenty two thousand, if I'm correct, around there. Yeah. Was yep. that that was though that was before the split though, correct? And so really, it's it's a fifth of that is their bull case. You're talking you're talking post split terms. You're talking twenty thousand dollars as of the stock today. Yep. And, and people look at that and they say, well, that's a huge increase. I say, you know, actually it's not. It's like two and a half times each year. So that's like 250% per year increase in the stock value to get to that because of the compounding that you have over five years. Has, has like there, you, has like there said, been... We, we went... Go ahead. Okay, I, I was just going to say... I agree with you. I know Elon wants wants to to grow earnings at at forty percent a year is is sort of the goal. And so, is there any precedent? And I know that Tesla is is a company that's doing what very few companies have ever done that has grown that fast that consistently. Or is so? I or is this it. kind of an exception? Because I I can't. I mean, even Amazon as as great of a run as it's had, it's nowhere near those numbers. But I, I like you said, I think this company you know will be the biggest company in the world at some point down the road. So it, it, in that case, it's got bigger growth potential than Amazon. Yeah, if you compare it a little bit to Amazon, what Amazon is doing is they're not producing very many products. I mean, they 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 mainly buy things and sell them primarily what they do. And so they have a, a margin that they get off of whatever they buy and sell. They're not making things. What Tesla does is they make things and they make the factories that make things. Uh, and that is a huge difference and has a lot more potential than Amazon. Amazon's just buying from other people and they're just getting a little margin off of it. But Tesla is making factories that make things that will disrupt and make the world a better place. And I, I don't, I've never, I don't think anything has ever approached what Tesla is doing from the side, from the magnitude and from the change that will happen in the world. If you look at the 10 um, largest companies in the world now, they are, I think nine of them are either in energy or transportation. And Tesla is going to disrupt all of that. <laughs> So it's just huge as to what's going to happen over the next five years. I agree. I think hopefully Battery Day will help people open their minds to see Tesla as as the energy behemoth that it eventually will become and not just the high-tech car manufacturer that a lot of people see it as, a lot of the analysts as well. Right. Exactly. One of the things, you know, I talk about how you need to do your own research and there's, there's research that has to do with the financials, there's research that has to do with what are the products that they're making, how are they making them, how many are they making. The other part of the research that I do is I watch carefully what Elon's doing and how he's saying what he's saying and is he excited, is he not excited and is he discouraged. And most of the time these days, he's just totally encouraged. Oh, yeah. He's, he's excited about what's happening. And to me, that is a strong signal that the company is going to do better and better and better. Absolutely. He said on the, on the last earnings call that he's never been more excited about the future of Tesla. And he, he's a guy that he'll, he'll say what's on his mind. He, you know, most CEOs, you're like, oh, I'd expect them to say that. But Elon, Elon, you know, he, he usually gives it to you straight. Yeah. 
And, and one of the things is I, I learned this example when I was doing that 100,000 to 800,000 and the back down to zero. Mm-hmm. Right before I went back to zero, uh, well, a lot of that money was in Intel stock. But right before the stock really dropped a lot, there was a presentation that was made by the CEO and the CEO was had no excitement and he sounded kind of discouraged. He sounded tired and myself and, and all the other people I was, you know, investing with and looking at this with none of them, none of us caught that as a signal and we should have because right after that, the stock dropped. That's, that's a great and point. So, so I watched carefully for, how the CEO is presenting themselves and how excited they are. And that's a part of my research. That's really interesting. I think a lot of people don't, don't really think about that. And I know, you know, so much goes into as much crap as Elon got when he kind of, you know, snapped back at some of the analysts. Uh, I don't know if that was a couple of years ago and he's kind of had a contentious relationship with, with, with the wall street analysts. And so my part of the, something I've talked about is I think that, at the end of the day that there's still a lot of emotion and in investing and a lot of the analysts don't necessarily like Elon and like the company. So a lot of the, the estimates on the street haven't really reflected and maybe they don't take the time to truly understand the story. And so that is allowed for this massive, you know, you know, dis out like dislocation of value, which as we've seen play out this year. And I think we both agree that it's, it's, we're, we're still in the early stages and the story has a long way to play. Cause a lot of people see the massive run and they don't understand that we were in a base for like five years. Kathy Woods talks about the bigger, the base, the bigger, the breakout. And so people see the huge breakout we've had this year and they say, Oh, the stock has to come back down to earth. And I think we, obviously we both don't think that way. Yeah. They- the, the company is not slowing down. And, and one of the things that I keep pointing out to people is you look at the mission statement of Tesla. Then one of the first words in it is accelerate. And Tesla has accelerated. They will continue to accelerate. And that is going to drive the whole company from here on out and has already. They're just accelerating. And so whatever you see in the way of past performance, they're going to accelerate that into the future. Absolutely. To to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy, is that it? Yeah, something like that. But the first part of it is the part that I get is that it's accelerate. Right. And people don't understand what it means to accelerate. And, and just oh, one thing I wanted to clarify with you, you talked about how you know, Tesla, Elon says that they like to, you know, get uh, one, what, 40% increase per year or 140% per year. I guess 40% a year growth. What he actually said was at least 50%. And the only way that he saw that they could get to 40% growth, as low as 40% growth, is if there was a World War III <laughs> or if there was a huge meteorite that hit the Earth and caused a huge disruption. Otherwise, he sees them being above 50% growth right. per year. You're right. And, I, I should have clarified. That says, was his, his bear case. Yeah. And when he says above 50%, he doesn't mean just 51%. He just means above. And he's accelerating, and it's, I, I think it's going to be way higher than 50% per year. That's, that's my opinion, based on Tesla accelerating and what they've accelerated in the past and what they're going to be accelerating in the future. And if I if I had to to ask you a question, I, I've seen where you've you've talked about baseball analogies. I love baseball, where you you had your home run pitch and you, and you swung hard and you hit it with Tesla. Taking that baseball metaphor one more one step forward, where would you peg Tesla in its in its story as far as a baseball game? What inning do you think we're in with the Tesla story and and, and the Tesla stock, where it's really reflective of of what it? I mean, I guess if, if if you think it's going to be worth twenty thousand by twenty twenty five, then we're, we're we're in like the second inning, maybe. I'd put us in the first inning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you know and and you know I remember when my kids were in uh, t ball or in you know soccer or something. I mean, they may I guess it was mainly yeah, one of those sport things. But basically, what would happen is 
if one team got way ahead at the beginning and like they were you know, like 10 points or whatever ahead, something outrageous, then what they would do is they would put in their second string. No, this is actually, let me change that. This is football. And so it was, it was football at the high school level. And if like the football team was ahead by 40 points, they would take their, their uh, first string out of the game and they'd put in their second string. And, and what happens is that that's what a lot of companies do is they figure, well, you know, we've achieved this now, now we just need to kind of coast along and we'll be fine. And the people that were doing that leave the company and they go start off some other company and, you know, like PayPal, you look at PayPal, Elon Musk was part of PayPal. Well, you look at all the other people, they call them what the PayPal mafia. Right. Uh, some of them went off and formed what LinkedIn and some of them formed you know, some other things. It, it was just amazing what they all formed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the PayPal just kind of, you know, it's kind of just going along. It's not doing much. And that's what happens with a lot of companies is they get to that point and then they just kind of drop off and flatten out. One of the reasons, one of the things that people don't get is he, is um, Elon Musk has a compensation program that gives him a lot of stock or the option to buy a lot of stock. Elon doesn't need the money. He doesn't want the money. What he wants to do is to change the world by making things more sustainable and taking people to Mars and having another civilization on Mars. That's what he wants to do with his money. He learned from PayPal that in order to do that, he has to maintain control of the company. And the only way to maintain the control of the company is to own a lot of the stock. And so he has this compensation program that allows him to own more of the stock, which is necessary because over time, uh, they're giving stock to their employees and there's other dilution that's happening in order for Elon to maintain control of the company, he has to have more stock than he has now as far as uh, ownership. He has to maintain his percentage ownership, essentially, of the stock. Because he didn't do that on PayPal. And on PayPal, everybody else wanted to sell and go on to move on to other things. He wanted to take PayPal to be the largest company in the world from a financial standpoint. And everybody else wanted to sell out. So he took his money and started SpaceX and Tesla and other companies. Right. There, there was like a coup, if I'm recalling correctly, from the, the Ashley Vance biography. And, and he, he was pushed out and he said he started his own thing. And yeah, it's hard. It's, it's curious. Like, had he stuck with PayPal, how big PayPal would be today if it would be like like a, like a square with that kind of growth. I, I mean, the PayPal, it's, it's still been a great stock, but it's not one of those stocks that is like, you know, like a Tesla or a square. Yeah, well, Elon said that he had he had a business plan that would take PayPal to be the largest financial institution in the world. That's right. <laughs> wow. And, and you know, and people they, just, they I don't know if they just don't know that or they don't realize what that means. To me, what that means is that this is not the first time Tesla has done, or that this is not the first time that Elon has accomplished this type of thing. He had a plan to do this before and he knows what it takes to do it. And now he's doing it with Tesla and SpaceX. That's a great point. I I hadn't thought about it in that context before. Yeah. This is one of those things that, you know, you take all these things and they just add up to having a tremendous amount of confidence in the future of, of Tesla. And, and going off, off the future of Tesla do you have any predictions for Battery Day? Do you do you have any thoughts on Battery Day you'd like to share? Um, I think that uh, what we're going to see out of, out of Battery Day is pretty much exactly what <laughs> what Elon has said, which is we'll all be very surprised, and it's going to focus on to me. It's going to focus on changes in technology that will allow Tesla to make batteries at scale to meet the demands that they have and to reduce the cost of the batteries. How much? I have no idea. I'm, I'm waiting. And that's one of the things that I hope we'll see. Hopefully we'll see on battery day is, is to what extent uh, Elon is doing those things. I think we all 
degree that he'll be doing that is just the extent that I think will be the surprise. Right. I'm, I'm very excited. I, I, the, the road runner, the, just the speed, I think a, a lot of the, the analysts have really harped on the production. So I know there was an underwhelming response by the stock after autonomy day. Although I think that could be different for battery day, given the fact that autonomy was still several years out at the time. So it's hard for people to really put a number to it. But if you can prove that you've reduced the cost of the battery and you've to use your favorite word, accelerated the production speed. I think that people can then model out. They can really, a lot of the, the analysts, they aren't, you know, when, when, when they say, I believe like 5 million cars by, by 2024, 2025, they're not even giving them credit there. They're, they're like half that, that estimate. So if you can prove they yeah, have the technology, I think they'll start to come up dramatically. My estimate for 2025 with Tesla is 20,000 20, 20 million vehicles a year, 20 million vehicles a year in 2025. Wow. I, I think <laughs> I saw other people that have that for 2030. So you're, you're, you're five years more bullish. You're five years ahead on, on a lot of other people who, who are, who are still bullish on the stock. Yep. And, and the main reason for that is that acceleration factor, right? That Elon and Tesla are just accelerating. You basically, you take, what I think is one of, like one of the smartest people in the world is in the way of test in the way of Elon. And then he attracts the smartest people in the world to work for him. And that in turn attracts even more smarter people to work for him. And that you look at the acceleration that's going to result from that. And it's just amazing. And then you take a company that most companies, and I've worked for a number of them that, if you try to innovate something, they basically tell you to you know, go back to your corner and just do what you're asked to do. Don't try to innovate. Well, if you do that at Tesla, you get fired. Right, uh, right. If you don't innovate. So, you know, you take that type of, you take the smartest people in the world, you put them together and you tell them you have to innovate. And man, it, it's going to be unbelievable what they can accomplish. I was listening to the Elon Musk Ashley Vance autobiography last night, and it talked about in the in the in a board meeting. If you say, "Well, we've always done it like that," he will literally throw you out of the meeting. You know, so it's, <laughs> it, it, he has no tolerance for that. He's constantly innovating. I think that that's you know he, he's an intense guy, and that that what makes that's what makes Elon Elon. That's what makes him and Tesla so great. So I, yep. I, I really appreciate you taking the time today to, to speak with me. Is there anything else you wanted to add on, on Tesla or on anything else for that matter? No. I'll just put out there something that I, that's even crazier than what I've said so far. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear it. And that is, that is with, uh, and, and part of the reason for, um, for some of my estimates is listening to Tony Seba and what he says, uh, and, and he's basically for 15 years, he's looked at disruptive technologies and he's made some predictions and some of them, many of them are coming true. One of the ones that I picked up on recently is that he is predicting that within 10 years that they will be able to, using programmable microbial fermentation, they will be able to produce proteins and food as well as plastics. And, you know, I look at that and I say, wait a second, in order for Elon and SpaceX to go to Mars, they'll need to be able to produce food. They'll need to be able to produce materials. And I think that eventually Tesla will get into programmable microbial fermentation and they'll be producing food and plastics. And these, these plastics won't just be normal plastics. They'll be advanced plastics that they can use for making vehicles and, and that type of thing. So that's just a, a really out there type of a prediction. But, you know, I, I can see it happening. So Tesla's getting into farming, into biological no. manufacturing. I don't know. Maybe that's not correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one way to look at it is, for example, to make plastic now. Millions of years ago, or maybe, I don't know how many millions of years ago, uh, plants existed, and those plants then decayed, and under pressure became oil. And then we take the oil, and we make you know fuels and plastics out of them. What you can do with the programmable microbial fermentation is you can skip that entire process, 
and you can go from a simple plant material to plastic. And there are people that are working on that right now. And Tony Seba feels that by the end of this, by the end of this decade, by 2030, that that will be a real thing and will uh, be happening around the world. That's fascinating. I, I need to look into that and, and read more about that because that's, that's really fascinating. Yeah. Anyway, I just, I'll leave you with that thought. Who knows if any of this will come true? We'll have to see. But uh, so far, a lot of my predictions about Tesla have come true. So I'm, I'm kind of encouraged. That's right. That's right. We, we, we shall see you. You've been pretty spot on and, and your, you know, your performance shows that. So with, with 20 times return, that that's pretty impressive. I, I hope it continues for, for all of us and for everyone listening out there. If you want to follow Bruce Burnworth at B Burnworth on Twitter, he's got some great insights, talks about his approach. And I, I really enjoy following you and, and all the, uh, the insights you have. So thank you for that. And, and thanks for coming on the podcast. All right. Best of luck to everybody. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Take care, man. Have a great weekend. Thank you.